Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's been six months since my last video, but don't worry because I have a lot of content to show you guys. I have four separate devlogs planned, each of which will come out one after another with a month or two worth of spacing between them. This is the first of the four devlogs and will be focused on optimization. Also, during the six months from the last devlog, I also got the basics of my game development document laid out. I have this in both a document and visual form. For the game development document, I found this amazing website called Nuclino that has a GDD template. It is incredibly interactive and visual and also has multiple modes you can view your GDD with. Along with that, I also have a roadmap that I plan to display later on. Now moving on to the actual contents of this devlog, optimization. After the last video, I took a break from game development for around 2-3 to three months and instead focused on school. I recently had my spring break though and decided to revisit the game. After doing this I noticed a few key issues. One of these was that my game ran terribly. Despite having 16 gigs of RAM and an average CPU, my game ran at around 5-15 to 15 FPS. Sometimes it even dipped down to 1 or 2. This was absurd and annoying, and also meant that my maps couldn't be any bigger than a minute's worth of exploring. So what did I do? Well, I began by scouring the internet, looking at blogs, reading official Unity documentation, and watching YouTube tutorials on optimization. In doing so, I discovered a lot of things that I was doing wrong. If you happen to also be a game dev watching this video, I will share everything I learned about optimization in case you are also struggling with this issue. First thing is static objects. To start off, go into your maps and find all the objects that stay still. Things like the floor, walls, plants, blocks, environment assets, background assets, terrain, etc. Then set them into static mode. This informs various Unity systems that this object won't be moving, and in turn frees up memory and boosts your FPS. The next one is combining meshes. Generally, your maps will consist of a lot of random props, plants, walls, blocks, etc. These take up a lot of processing power to render and run. For example, my maps would sometimes reach millions of edges and vertices that's very difficult to render. Now, luckily enough, there's a free asset on the asset store called Mesh Combiner. After downloading it into your project, you can use it to combine different meshes in your scene. Doing this allows maps to run a lot faster and also improves the performance of the next step, which is Occlusion Culling. Occlusion Culling is basically turning off objects the player can't see. Because when you think about it, if the player can't see a part of the map but it's still rendering, then that is just wasted resources. There are a couple ways you can go about doing this. For a lot of people, the best option is to use Unity's built-in Occlusion system, or you can create your own. Another possibility is to use sub-scenes, which are essentially scenes within scenes that can be turned on and off. You can also change your project settings to make your game run smoother. For example, you can change your color space from linear to gamma. Gamma doesn't look as good, but it runs anywhere from 10 to 30% smoother than linear. I would also recommend changing your code backend settings from the default mono to IL2CPP. You can also go into your graphics settings and change some of the settings to be less demanding on your device. A lot of the time, your lighting settings are key to how your game looks. Sadly, they can also end up taking a heavy toll on your graphics. You can optimize these settings by just playing around with the settings and lowering them just enough so that they don't substantially damage the look of your game. For example, my game doesn't have a lot of reflections and so I immediately cut down on reflections and whatnot. To boost your performance even further, you can also bake your lighting. Baking your lighting means that your laptop doesn't have to generate lighting as heavily during runtime. I haven't done this step yet, but I plan to do it with my maps in the future. There are a lot of things you can do to in-game textures to make the game run faster. For example, you can decrease the quality of textures without damaging their look too much by compressing them. You can also change texture import settings to lower their size. Atlasing your textures is also a great option. What atlasing does is it takes a bunch of textures and materials and combines them into one, meaning that you can use the same material on different objects and make the different objects look different with the same material. I will leave a couple links in the description for all of these different techniques. 
So let's see the results. Prior to making any changes, I made some recordings just to see how big of an impact my optimizations will have. My FPS used to range anywhere from 5 to 10 on average, and I couldn't run maps that were larger than a minute's worth of exploring. In some cases, the guns would also completely bug out, and they would just begin to either jiggle or disappear completely. This happened because of a lack of computing power, which was evident when the issue completely disappeared with all the new optimizations. After all the optimizations, my game runs anywhere from 30 to 50 FPS. Also, using my occlusion culling systems, I can have massive worlds or maps and still run them fine. There are still other steps that I can take to optimize the game even further, but I'll leave them off until later. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want to be notified about other upcoming devlogs I have planned. With that said, I'll see you in the next one.